Hello everyone, today I will recap Battle of the Bulge Winter War, 2020. Sit back and enjoy. During World War II, the Germans got together in 1994 to attack the last Western Front. On the other hand, the Americans lost a lot of people during the war. The Arden was covered in snow, and Lieutenant Kappa, crouching on the icy ground, took in his surroundings. He heard what sounded like distant gunshots or explosions, so he got up and ran hard to the left through the tall pine trees. The ground was covered in snow, and he had to push through it. He finally got to the soldiers' defense area, where half of their bodies were buried in the icy ground. At first, they were confused and shocked when a soldier suddenly swept in front of them, but they still got together and aimed their guns at him. They missed him, though, because Kappa ran quickly and didn't look back. At the same time, Captain Daniels tried to talk to their general over the radio. He kept saying Little Blue, but there was no response. So he returned to his teammates and asked how their armored military vehicle was doing. They told him they were stuck because the cold had caused the battery to stop working, so the car couldn't move. Lefty, a soldier, also said that he couldn't talk on the vehicle's radio unless they were on higher ground. Daniels took deep breaths to show his anger and told his soldiers to give themselves 10 minutes to get out. If they still couldn't get out, they were only allowed to keep the equipment they could use and had to destroy the rest. He told the soldiers in a strong voice not to leave anything for the Germans, and they agreed immediately. Corporal Jack ran back to his platoon in another scene. The soldier asked him what he saw but he said he couldn't see well. He told his men what to do and told them to spread until they reached the tree line and only shoot when he did. They did what he said and stayed where they were. After a while, a soldier on a horse quietly looked around the area. The American troops waited until they figured out what the soldier was doing, but he was only there for a few minutes before leaving. At the same time, Kappa ran into a German and his troops, both shocked by the meeting. The German finally yelled to get his fellow soldier's attention and he ran away and hid behind a fallen tree trunk. Unfortunately, he crawled along the snowy path, letting the German soldiers know where he was hiding. They shot at him, but he was running and could avoid all of them. At the same time, Major General Mike walked into the office at their headquarters. Captain Haas greeted him and told him what was going on with different groups of soldiers. The reports were full of lists of bad things. Haas said that Sector H was pulling back, and it looked like the German 12th and 9th Panzer Divisions were ready to take them out. All units reported running into enemies. Major General Mike cleared his throat as he tried to take in the bad and stressful news. He asked right away about their spy plane, but Haas told him they were working on it but that the weather wasn't good. Even so, he told him to make things right because he wanted aerial observation to be used. Last, he said Captain Daniels and Lieutenant Kappa still had yet to return. Daniels tried to report again by calling Little Blue over the radio. Still, in their car, his guys tried to make it work. After a while, two more cars with a platoon of soldiers got close to them. The military police lieutenant who had just arrived went out and asked them how they were doing because he spoke English well. They thought he was one of them. Then, the lieutenant looked at them and asked more questions about the car the American soldiers were hoping to write in. They quickly said no when they were finally asked if anyone knew where they were. He laughed turned back to his men and made a hand gesture that meant to get rid of them. Then, one of the soldiers asked him in German what to do with the dead bodies. This showed that the crowds on the other side were all wearing American uniforms. Daniels could see what had happened to his group from a distance so he left the area without being seen. While this was going on, Captain Jack's group walked through the deep snow, and some complained about how cold it was. Later, they ran into a group of soldiers. One of them spoke English very well. Everyone looked like they were Americans because they were dressed like their allies. The captain of the second group asked them to work together to help protect against the Germans. One soldier from Jack's unit agreed, and hoping for hot food, he joined. Even though Jack thought something wasn't right, he let his unit join even though the others were still unsure. At that moment, Kappa was still running, and two German soldiers were following him. From a distance, his friend yelled at him to hurry up, but the Germans ran too fast to notice the explosives and traps hidden under the snow. Kappa got to his friends and dove into the hole while they shot at the enemies to protect him. A fellow soldier stopped the sudden attack of a crouching shovel. After that, he lost his mind. He went back to Major General Mike's tent in a rage, because he didn't know where the German Panzer tanks were. Even though he hadn't talked to his men since yesterday, he told the lieutenant of the 755th platoon to try everything he could to get in touch with them. He told him that they needed him more than ever this time, and that they had to start fighting again. Then he called all the other soldiers in the tent and told them that the battle was still going on, 
and that they shouldn't feel like they'd lost. Before I continue, shout out FG. Thank you for supporting the channel. Comment down below and get your shout outs next video. After that, Major Omar Bradley entered the tent and discovered they were running low on infantry, tanks, and artillery. The Germans were right on Elsenborn Road, between Gavin Road and the Ander Bridge. He thought their location was known to the enemy and that they could be surrounded at any time. Bradley asked if there was resistance, but the only ones left were small groups that needed to work together. At the same time, Jack's men have no idea how dangerous it must be for them to be with the American pretenders. One of the soldiers notices that the vehicle has the same marking as the headquarters, which is odd. Still, Jack laughs it off and goes with them. In the next scene, we see what's left of the North Lazarus Hospital. Doc walks and sees how badly hurt soldiers are hurting. When Kappa finally wakes up, the nurse, Captain Mary, tells him that he was shot in the leg. He tells her he has to leave, but she stops him because his stitches still need to be set. Doc finds him and gives his things back to him. Kappa insists on leaving the hospital in the end. Kappa finally gets to their headquarters, where he shakes hands with a soldier from his unit. He learns that not everyone made it out of the ambush, and that he is the only officer left. The platoon only has 350 pieces of field artillery left. Their guns are broken, and they haven't been in touch with anyone in a long time. The soldiers know that their situation looks bad, because the Germans are always coming through to attack them and take down their position. Daniels can get away. So he strides toward the deep snow. He sees Private hiding behind some trees and pointing his gun at the Germans. The Private tells him that he can hear the scout plane above them. Daniel has to try again to call Bluebird on his radio, and after a few seconds, someone answers his call. They find out where the Germans are, and they also tell Major Mike. Kappa talks to the soldiers who were there when the Germans attacked. The soldier next to him tells them that Valley Creek, which comes from the east, and the mines on their southern flank will protect them by slowing down the Germans. But Kappa says that they will still come even if it takes a long time. They don't have much ammunition left, and there's not much they can do to protect their tanks. They also have no hope of getting friendly fire artillery or more troops. Because of how the Germans were able to bring down their troops, they were in a much worse position. Still, the soldiers are determined to stay where they are and keep fighting. They say that they owe this fight to themselves and their fellow soldiers. Still, Kappa is determined to keep the last unit alive with him, and he no longer agrees to make sacrifices. A few minutes later, Jack's group gets to the depot where Lieutenant Kappa is. They are still with the Germans, who speak English and don't know that wolves are in sheep's clothing. The German lieutenant asks them what guns fuel and ammunition are at the depot. Kappa tells him they have been told to blow it up so that nothing is left for the crowds. He insists on changing the orders, but Kappa won't give in because he wants to get the wounded officers out of the way first. At the end of their fight, the lieutenant finally gives up and lets Kappa do whatever he wants for the depot. Major Mike and Brad talk about their plans and where their soldiers are simultaneous. Brad finds out that English-speaking Germans wearing American military police uniforms are moving in and out of the lines of their platoons. Mike is worried about this information because it could be used to hurt the soldiers and their supplies. Still having trouble with the crowds because of the American pretender, the depot has a new problem. The German soldier stops Kappa from saying they need the jeep to move the wounded. The lieutenant, who acts as a go-between, also says no to Kappa's request, even though they say the car belongs to their headquarters. He tells them to walk but Kappa won't go. Instead, he stands up to ask what's going on. The lieutenant sent his request again, and they were given permission to drive the vehicles. After the platoon leaves, the Germans are told to get rid of any American outposts and injured soldiers that are still there. As the cars go down the main road, they run into Daniels, carried by two men, one on each shoulder. They help him back to the jeep and bring him water right away. After a while, Daniels realizes that the Germans caught his men by surprise, while driving his old headquarters jeep. Kappa asks the other soldiers who came with them, and they say something isn't right about them. After putting together all the clues, they decide that they are German and need to go back. The men discuss what to do and decide whether to hide or fight. After talking, they finally decide to fight. Kappa tells the runners to tell the other units about the battle and get ready. As soon as they hear the cue, the sergeants get excited and follow orders. They hurry to get on the military jeep and get where they are supposed to be. Daniel's unit will catch the Germans off guard. They smile and wave at them, making them look like friends. The men inside the tanks are patiently waiting for the signal and for the crowds to get closer. Finally, Daniel yells, hit it, and guns and tanks start shooting. Germans are scared and running away. 
but they can't escape faster than the bullets. Back at the depot, a wounded American sergeant talks to another soldier, but he doesn't know that the other soldier is German. The German discovers that the Americans are still looking and fighting for the crowds at the checkpoints. After getting that information, he goes behind the soldier and points his gun at his head. Now led by a sergeant, Kappa's group gets ready to face a huge group of Germans coming their way. The black men protect themselves by hiding behind the barricade and firing their guns at the white men. After the sergeant confirms his signal, the Germans rush towards them, but they are spread out and are being outnumbered slowly. The German soldier tells the officer where the Americans are. The lieutenant has a temper tantrum and tells his soldiers to hurry up. On higher ground, the Germans got together to protect themselves. Daniel's group hides and moves very quietly. A soldier counts down with his hand and tells the rest of the army to shoot at the enemy. The surprise attack shocked the Germans, both sides fired bullets at each other in different parts of the Arden and tried to damage German panzer tanks. A problem arises in the depot because the explosion that was supposed to destroy the supplies is broken and can only be used by hand. Wayne, a wounded soldier, overhears the conversation and volunteers to do it and stay behind. He tells his friends he wants to do it and everything will be fine. The tank and rifles in Jack's group are still firing at the depot. They are told that the bombs are set and that they have only five minutes to get out. Kappa yells at the soldiers to leave, which stops the gunfire. But the Germans go quickly to where the gasoline is and see Wayne holding the explosive. They try to scare him into not moving, but it's too late. The explosion has already hit. Brad goes into the tent of the Major and tells Mike what the Germans are doing. When he asks where they should stand up for themselves, Mike points to Estonia. He tells Haas to get the jeep ready because they are going there. The rest of the units are told to turn around and fight, which will stop and slow down the Germans. As they pass each other on their way to Bastonia, the last few reinforcements in the Arden say hello and cheer for their small victory. In the end, we see American soldiers' military vehicles heading to Bastonia to continue fighting the Germans there. The movie ends here. Thanks for coming to watch. Please click the bell icon and like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a new video. Comment down below where you're watching from, and I'll include a shout out in my next video.